Hey guys, I'm in the wrong spot. Um, I was just scrolling on TikTok and I just so happened to relive. Oh my god, my chair has seen better days. <laughs> but I'm sitting on my bed. And um, I was scrolling through TikTok. I relived a couple of my favorite memories. So I'm going to tell you guys some stupid memories about me and my cousins. And now for reference. Um... When I say my cousins, I re I refer to the ones on my dad's side. Uh, mainly my... Wait a minute. I don't actually know how the other two are related to me. I don't know. Anyways, I, I don't really think they're my cousins, but just to simplify it, I think they just slapped the name of cousin on there just to simplify it for me. I have actually no idea how, in reality, they're related to me, because... I don't know. But for reference, I have about five cousins on my dad's side. Two are brother and sister, and they're the ones who I'm not really sure about um, how they're related to me. So um, we're going to call them Barack, Brock, and Anna. Brock and Anna. So they're the ones that I'm not really related to. I don't really know how they're related to me, but I've seen them pretty much my entire life. So we have Brock and Anna. And my other three are my first cousins, the ones that I see um, a lot. And whenever I say my cousins in my videos, that's who I'm talking to about. And there's a sister, a sister, and a little brother. Um, the little brother, we're going to call him Lucas. Let's call him Lucas. Um, he is young, young, young. I don't want to say exactly how old he is, but um, I will just say a false age. I, we're gonna say he's two. He's not actually two, he's older than that. But I don't want to tell you guys how old he is for, for privacy reasons. I also don't want to tell you his real name. But, um, Lucas is about two years old. Uh, well, for the purpose of this video, we'll just say he can walk and talk at two years old. Um, and then you have his middle sister. We're gonna, we're gonna call her, um, let's call her Sally. Sally is only a couple of years younger than I am. I am my old, I am the oldest, technically, out of, minus Brock and Anna, I am the oldest out of the three. Even though I'm their cousin and I'm not their sibling, um, I'm an only child, but I am the oldest by about maybe nine months. I was born in April and the oldest, um, my birthday is April 13th, for those of you wondering. And, um, the oldest in that trio was born in the same year, but, um, she was born in January. So, for that reason, we're gonna call her Jan. Um, so the oldest is Jan, the middle is Sally, and the youngest is Lucas. Um, for that reference. And I'll just be referring to myself as Silas. So, I'm Silas. Um, and... Ew, what's on my leg? Gross. But, anyways, so, one year, my dad took me to, I think it was either Dunham's or Dick's Sporting Goods. I have to clarify that it's Dick's Sporting Goods, <laughs> just for a reason, because of the name of the store. But he took me there one time because I said I was interested in trying to learn tennis. And he was like, okay, well, we will take you to Sporting Goods shop to get you some tennis rackets and tennis balls. So, um, I have two tennis rackets, one for me and one for somebody else, probably my dad, um, and, and we have about maybe, like, four tennis balls, now three, and I'm getting to that in a minute. So, um, it was really hot. I think it was last summer, I believe. It was really, really hot, um, and Jan and I were, everybody else was inside, Jan and I were outside and we were playing, um, it was, like, 4, 3 p.m. in the afternoon, like, golden hour. Sun, sun is starting to go down, but it's not starting to cool off yet. It's probably, like, the height of the heat. It was super hot. Um, she was in a tank top and shorts, and I was in a short sleeve shirt because I am not confident enough to wear tank tops. Um, and I was also in shorts because it's, you know, hot. And we were playing tennis. I don't know why the outfit matters. What is written on the bottom of that? Oh, that's what's written on the bottom of that. Um, but 
I don't know why the outfits matter, but I just wanted to say it was, like, super hot, and we were sweating. Um, now, normally, I don't sweat very much, and instead of, whenever I get hot, like, if I'm laying on my bed and I get hot, I'll get, like, this tingle down my spine, and it's like, oh, you might want to, like, take off a blanket, so that's how I know to take off a blanket. And, um, whenever I get hot, like, being outside, I'll feel this, like, sticky coating on my skin. It's all sweat, because sweat pools, like, up here, and, you know, whatever. Um, but it's, like, it feels like I have a second skin on, and it's weird, and I hate it. Um, so, thank god I wasn't cursed with sweating. But, um, Jane and I were outside, and we were playing, and we were sweating, it was so hot. Um... And we did not have a tennis net. We did not have a net. So, um, Jan was over towards the house. Um, I was more towards the play set. And there was a good amount of distance between us. Um, I hit the ten- I hit the tennis ball. She- and she failed to hit it and we almost took out a window. It hit the deck. It- like, okay, there was a window right here and then there's the deck. The deck was, like, right there. And this was the bottom of the window. It hit, like, right between- um, the bottom of the window and the deck. It hit, like, right in the middle of that. And both me and her were like, oh my god, we almost took out a window. And we don't even live there. <laughs> we, the only, that's where we go to visit. If we're going, so, like, um, that's how I see them, basically. I don't go to their house, they don't come to mine. Um, we visit our grandmother's house. Um, and we stay there for a couple hours, we play around, you know. Stuff like that. Uh, and that's where we meet up. We don't ever go to each other's houses unless it's for, like, a party or something. Um, and all the parties are at Jan and Sally's house. Um, I don't really know why. I think it's just because I have, like, a bigger house. But, hey, that's fine. Um, I like seeing them anyway. But we almost took out a window. And, um, we were like, you know what? Maybe instead of playing like this, we should play like this. So, um, I went down further in the yard because she lived my grandmother on my dad's side, she lives on a hill, um, and it's, like, a pretty steep slope, like, um, her trampoline is positioned down in the shade, she does have a trampoline, we like to go play on it in the summer, but, um, her trampoline is positioned down in the shade, um, and, well, yeah, it's, it's in the shade, and, um, we run, we have a tradition, okay? It's never been any different unless, like, something serious is happening. Um, like, for example, if I was walking and I was about to tell my cousin, like, something, like, that probably shouldn't be mentioned. Not, like, uh, how do I say this? But, like, something deep that's just girl talk between me and most likely Jan, because Jan is only nine months younger than me, and she gets me more than, hey, shut up. Hey, by the way, if you guys have an Xfinity TV, um, I'm gonna teach you guys how to get around it, okay? Here, quick crash course. Um, you will be asked to get a daily reboot. Okay, so you don't wanna skip it. Here's what you wanna do. You wanna go to the change, um, the, like, change, uh, like, change your update time. Um, and whenever you go to change it, don't actually change it, just click down, hit cancel. And it, bring you, it doesn't bring you back to the main screen. It just takes you out. So that is how you infinitely skip it. As long as somebody else in your household, if you're connected to the same router, doesn't hit skip. Because my grandmother is guilty of that. If she has the option, she's just going to keep hitting skip. Um, and once you skip it twice, it just takes away that option in general. And um, it happens for all the TVs. Um, and I hate that. Because I'm just trying to watch stuff and I'm trying to go to sleep. And... If I'm asleep, I don't, I, I wear a sleep mask because I have trouble sleeping, and, um, I know, it's, it's, like, really old and crusty, but I got it, like, a couple of years ago, and, um, this is just because I stretched out the fabric too much, and it, um, doesn't fit me anymore, so I had to tie, like, a section of it off so that, so that it fits, but that is how you skip it. You just go to, up to hit, like, change update time and just cancel it. It doesn't bring you back to the skip update whatever screen it just takes you right back to whatever you were watching you're welcome but anyways uh we thought instead of playing like this we should play like this she went over by the hill um and i went down by the hill she went over by the other hill that leads to like the deer feeder and i went down by the slope like that leads down to the highway and um 
I hit it a couple times, she hit it a couple times, she was like, you know what, let's switch spots, I was like, okay, so we switched spots, she spikes it, like, over my head, and that's weird, because I'm very tall for my age, I'm five foot four, um, and it goes clear up into the weeds, where we are allowed in the weeds, as long as the adults know where we are, but, um, it was, it wasn't, like, dinner time, but, like, everybody was getting ready to go in for dinner, and we were still outside, because we still wanted to play, and, um, we went down to the house, we asked, like, hey, can we go up in the weeds and try to find our tennis ball, and, uh, my grandmother and my dad were, like, yeah, go for it, um, but, like, keep your ears open, because it's almost dinner time, and we're gonna yell out the door for you to come in for dinner, and, uh, we're, like, okay, yeah, we'll do that, and Jan turns to me, she's, like, I'll listen for you, because you're deaf, and I'm, like, okay, for the reference, I'm not actually deaf, I just have hearing loss, it's worse on my left ear than it is my right. But, anyways, um, I have trouble hearing, so that's why she calls me deaf. And we all, we go up the hill, and we're looking around, and we can't find our tennis ball. And, um, we were thinking, you know what, let's, you know what, let's keep this a secret between us. Let's break the rules, and let's go up the trail. There are, um, two trails that you can take. There's one that leads this way and branches off into a bunch of other paths that lead, like, higher up into the hills. Because this is out in the countryside. And then there's one that just leads up to the massive pond that we're not allowed to swim in because it's, like, infested with wildlife. And then that one just leads back down to the house in a different area uh, on the other side of the house. And so we were like, you know what, let's break the rules and let's go up this trail. So we go up to the trail to the right and we're looking around. We can't find it. We go up to the trail to the left. We look around. We can't find it. And um, as we get back to, like, where the trail breaks off, like, in the middle of it, um, we hear the dinner time yell, which is either, if we're far enough away, uh, it's an air horn, because she has an air horn, because she has, like, three, formerly three, now two dogs, and she's the call back to the house, but she saw us, and she was like, girls, dinner time, I didn't know what I was at this time, so I apologize, and we had come down, and we're talking at the dinner table, and, um, me and Jan are talking to my dad, and my dad, um, he's one of the ones, one of the adults that knows how to drive the buggy. They have a, um, they have a side-by-side. -side. And they used to, like, bring it up, like, bring, because my grandfather on my dad's side, he, like, works outside a lot. Um, and we were like, okay, yeah. And we were talking to my dad. And my dad goes, so you girls lost a tennis ball, like, all the way up on the hill. And we were like, yeah. Um, Jan, like, spiked it over my head. And we tried to look around, and we couldn't find it, and my dad was like, and you guys went up the trails to try and find it, uh, he promised not to snitch on us, and we were like, yeah, uh, Jan's mother doesn't want her kids going up into the wilderness without an adult, I mean, probably my dad, because my dad likes to hike, and we were like, well, yeah, um, we didn't go very far, but we couldn't see it, um, and it's like a bright yellow tennis ball, and we couldn't see it, and he was like, okay, Abba, after dinner, I will take the buggy around the side of the house. I'll go up and I'll try to find your tennis ball. And we're like, okay, sounds cool. Yeah. So my dad takes us in the buggy because if you try hard enough, you can fit one full grown man and three little kids. We have done this before. And um, we go up and we start looking around. And my dad's like, I see something up on the hill. And we go up the trail to the left. And it opens up into, like, a massive field. And, um, we're not really allowed out there because there's nothing there. And also, it's probably infested with ticks. It's in the country. And, uh, there's another hill. And then I think there's, like, more hills because it's all hills. There's literally all my state is just hills and mountains. And my dad was like, okay, hold on. Um, we can't get the buggy through here. Because I think the previous owners, before they bought that house and remodeled it the previous owners took a bunch of these logs and they put it along the actual path so that like people or animals or whatever wouldn't go into the fields because i think they don't really want anybody there so i was like okay i'm gonna park the buggy here i'm gonna leave the keys in and i'm gonna go in that field i want you guys to stay here just so you guys don't get like bitten by ticks or something and i'm like okay cool so we go up into the field or he goes up into the field and he finds our tennis ball. I have no idea to this day how it got there because it should have just gone straight in that little patch of woods 
Um, and we would have been able to find it if we had more time. Um, but I don't know how it ended up in that field. We were, like, not, if you had, if you had to hit a tennis ball that hard, and for it to go that far, it would have ended up in the field, you would have had to hit it, like, over the house, and it still would have had the velocity to keep going. I talked with my hands. Uh, yeah, we have no idea how it got there. We think something might have carried it, because they have coyotes, and yes, I say coyote, not coyote, it's coyote, and I don't care what it is. Um... And I think we, they have coyotes, they have rabbits, they have a bunch of funky stuff, they have deers, bear, uh, birds, squirrels, you name it, it's probably up there. Um, spiders, Ugh. but me, my dad, and Jan were like, well, how'd it get here? Because we didn't, how? And my dad was like, well, I have no clue, but uh, here's a tennis ball. <laughs> and we found it, so... Yeah, my dad had to go up in a buggy to the field to find our tennis ball. And it was in the summer, and those grasses in that field were all, like, dead. So, I don't know how my dad spotted it. I think he has dad vision, but, um, hero dad. He, now we still have four tennis balls. One is significantly grosser than the others. Because it landed in mud. Between, okay, there's, like, a, okay, the field goes like this, and then it ramps up, and there's, like, a small little thing that continues on for a long time and it's like a small little ridge and you can you have you can walk across it but um you would need to you can't have like two people side by side you have to walk in a single file line to get across it and then there's a giant not really big but it it's pretty big uh and there's like it's like a ravine not like massive you fall you're gonna die but like it's a ditch it's a massive ditch and it's full of mud shale slate um, clay, stuff like that, bunch of rocks everywhere, and, um, it landed in that, in that ditch, and my dad was like, well, that's pretty gross, and now it's, like, some weird faded yellow color compared to the rest, um, so yeah, but I had to go on a buggy to get our, um, to get our, uh, tennis ball, and now it's, like, just, like, really gross, <laughs> um, another story, Sometimes, not often, uh, but we try to do it, like, almost every summer, um, before Jan, Jan is, like, really, really popular in her school, she doesn't go to the same school as me, we live in different areas, um, but she is, like, super duper popular in school, but before she got popular, and it was just, like, a couple of friends, um, we had a sleepover, not with her friends, but, um, we had a sleepover, and now Sally, um, I don't think Lucas was alive. If he was, he was probably just a little sack of potatoes. Uh, but we'll just say Lucas is like little sack of potatoes. And by sack of potatoes, I mean an infant. So, um, he probably was not with my grandmother and, uh, me, Jan, and Sally. He was probably with his mother in their own house. Um, but we had, we had a sleepover and, um, we Jan wakes up, like, really early, like, 5, 6, 7 in the morning. Um, I tend to wake up a little later, uh, like, maybe 8, 9, 10 at the latest. And Sally just doesn't wake up till like, noon. <laughs> Not noon, but, like, 11 o'clock, maybe 10. But, um, on, on the weekends when we have these sleepovers, because they're both in, like, sports, and I don't do sports. I literally just sit and make content for a living. Um, I don't actually make money off this, by the way. But, um, I would always make a, like, I would always tell Jan, like, hey, wake me up when you get up. Because, um, you know, she was my friend. I didn't want her to be alone in the morning. Because, um, when you're around that family, this is not an insult to them. But they are a little quirky. They're, they're quirky. <laughs> what is called? We'll just call them quirky. They're a little quirky. And, um... It's kind of uncomfortable being with them. They're not like the, oh, do you lock her up in a room and never feed her because I'm skinny. Um, you can see my ribs. If That's why I don't wear um, a, two pieces. I wear a one-piece bathing suit. But, yeah, they're a little quirky. And um, so I was like, I don't, I, I didn't want her to be alone. And when there's more than one kid and they're, like, talking to each other, the adults tend to just leave us alone. Like, they'll watch us, make sure we don't, like, set the house on fire, do something stupid, but they won't, like, actively try to talk to us, 
oh, they'll just leave us alone. So I was like, wake me up when you get up. And she was like, okay. So, um, she woke up a little later. The sun had come up. And it was like that early morning, the grass is wet, the birds are chirping, and the sun is just starting to come over the hill, and it's like shining everywhere. And it is, that was the one of my best memories. I love that so much. And we were like full of energy. We already had, we call it first breakfast, because um, Sally tends to wake up a little later, and that's why they have breakfast for like the whole family. Um, but first breakfast is like just a little snack for me and Jan because we wake up early uh, when we have sleepovers. And um, we were like full of energy and we were like, um, hey grandma, can we go up to the trampoline? She was like, well, yeah, but um, I want you here, be I want you back before um, Sally wakes up and make sure to go put your shoes on. And we're like, okay. So we go put our shoes on, and we're still in pajamas. We haven't changed. And we run, because it's a tradition, uh, unless we're having a deep talk and we're side by side, we always run either to the playset or to the trampoline, because they do have a playset. They are taking it down, though, because I think the wood is starting to rot, and um, it's one time all three of us were swinging on it, and um, it came up out of the ground, and it scared us, so now we're like, ew, we don't trust it. So, um, we, me and Jan, ran down to, um, the trampoline, and we started, who texted me? Um, oh, it's just Wumi. Wumi is letting me draw her character, um, Lexi. I will get back to you on that. But, um, anyways... We were, like, jumping, and we were, like, wow, the trampoline is so bouncy in the morning. And we did this a, I don't, I don't know when we did this, but we did it twice. Um, once was with just me and Jan, and this is the story I'm telling, and twice the second time was all three of us. Because we wanted to show Sally, like, how bouncy it is in the morning. I don't know if it was our energy, if it was our child joy, but, um, that trampoline was, like, really, really bouncy. Like, we, normally when we jump up, we come up, like, about as tall as this Celsius can to the end of the net. It is a netted trampoline. But, um, in the morning, we were, like, jumping, and we could see over it, and the sun was shining, and it was so good. But the thing is, the sun doesn't really come down to the trampoline or the, um, uh, playset. And I'll tell you guys a story about the playset in a second. Let me just take a drink. But the story about the playset. Um, but yeah, it was so good. I love that memory. And um Okay, when they got the playset, it's like it's your standard playset. They had a little rock wall, they had little steps, um, they had a slide, they had a little ladder. It's a normal place, and it had two swings, count it, one, two. Um, and Sally was not alive at this time when we got it, and I don't really remember playing on it before Sally was alive. I don't even really have that many memories before then. There's not that much of an age gap, but it's still there. Um, I mean, yes, there is a gap between us, but, um, I don't really have that many memories from back then. And Sally, when even when she was a little more grown up, she was still a little scared to go on the swings because she thought, like, oh, she would fall or something like that. And whenever she got over that fear, she got over it really quick. I admire her for that. And, um, she was, and, um, well, we only had two swings. And we, now I feel really, really bad about this because, like, for a long time before Sally came into the equation, it was just me and Jan. So we have, now that has been fixed, but we were like a duo. We were always together. Um, it was, it was either me, Jan, or you getting none. We were a package deal. And whenever Sally came into the equation, we were like, well, what are we supposed to do? Because it's been just us for most of our lives. And, um, as Sally started to grow up, she got, like, she wasn't mad at us, but she was, like, upset that she was, like, left on her own because she was the third and, you know, stuff like that. But when Lucas came into the equation, we're like, all right, you're in our big girl group now. 
<laughs> now, Lucas is the only boy out of, um, technically three if you count me. Well, two. Uh, well, out of the three girls, I will call myself a girl for this. I'm not. But, um, anyways, when Sally started to grow up and she got over that fear of the swing set, she was like, well, I want to swing. But there were only two swings and we had already chosen our, like, swing order. We have a swing order. So, um, okay, now there's three, and I'll get into that. But, um, Jan takes the swing that's closest to the playset. I take the one in the middle, now the middle, and, um, Sally, she doesn't ever swing anymore, but, um, she takes the third. Um, and so, to solve this, my grandfather, he was like, I'll build you a third swing. She was like, oh, really? She was like, yeah. Or he, he was like, yeah, I'll do it for you. So, um, he put this sturdy wooden beam on the end of, like, the thing that holds up the two swings, and he bought another third green swing, and he hung it from there, and he made it low enough so that Sally could swing. And we were, we all chose our swing order. And it went Jan, me, and Sally, and we were swinging. Um, and that's why the playset has three swings, because, um, we didn't want to give ours up, because, you know, we love, we were packed with Jill, we love swinging together, um, and, um, Sally wanted to swing, so he got her a third swing. Now, whenever, now, this was before they had the trampoline, they have had, as, as long as I remember, they have had two trampolines in my lifetime. Uh, one, the first one was really, really old, and it also was a netted trampoline, but we weren't big enough to jump on it yet. We were, like, toddlers, and we couldn't jump on a trampoline yet. Um, and it had a bunch of holes in the netting, and that could be, we could fall out of. And Jan did fall out of one, but her mom caught her. Um, she did fall out of one. And she's, she's fine, she's fine. She's a little, uh, broken. <laughs> she's a little broken, but she's fine. And, um, Sally was alive. And, you know, we were swinging. Or not swinging, but we were jumping. Or, well, jumping. We were just sitting there. <laughs> but Jan just leans back out of nowhere. And she falls out of the hole. And her mother's like, oh, my God. And her mother actually catches her before she hits the ground. And, you know, she was crying. She was shaking up. I, um, now listen. I'm an only child. And I was, I am primarily raised with my mother. That's why you only really see this background anymore. Because I record from my mother's. This is my room in my mother's house. And um, I live with my mom. She raised me. I'm an only child, okay? Um, and now, this is one of my worst qualities. I get jealous very, very easily. And I have worked on this. It has gotten significantly better since my childhood years. But whenever my parents would show attention to another kid that wasn't me, I would get salty. Um, and this is where the punt comes in. So, I would get salty whenever they would show attention to, wait, whenever somebody else would get hurt, and, um, now this was probably really mean, but, um, we were toddlers, they kind of had to coddle us, so, this was probably really mean, but I got mad, and for some reason we had McDonald's, and I got, like, one of those really tiny fries that I would, like, tear through in 15 minutes, nowadays, so I went, and I sat in the hallway, and I was just eating my McDonald's fries, <laughs> and because I got really mad. Um, yeah, that was not good. And this happened again, and I'm really ashamed to admit this, but I love to be honest with you guys, because I want you guys to see, like, um, real side, because social media is fake. Let me remind you that social media is fake. Um, not everything you don't trust everything you see, and not everything you see out there is real. Some of it might be edited, some of it might be, like, um, trial and error until you get, like, the perfect Instagram photo. Whatever. Social media is fake, and I'm going to show you the brutal honesty of it. Um, now, when Sally was about maybe eight or nine years old, I, I think she might have been a little younger than this. I don't know. I don't remember. But um, she was old enough to, like, walk and talk and speak like a normal person. Um, and she also didn't have, like, the me hungry or I went to sleep to stuff like speech like that. She didn't have that. Also, fun fact, Sally and Lucas are left-handed. Um, Jan and me are right-handed. I might be a little am ambidextrous, because I can do things with both my hands, but I'm primarily right-handed. And, um, well, yeah, I'm primarily right-handed. That's why I wear rings on this hand. 
and stuff. Whatever. You know, you get the point. But, um, Sally, when she... I think this still happens to her, but it hasn't happened in a while. Um, whenever it would get, like, really hot and humid and muggy out. And, because my family on that side is, like, outdoorsy. We love to go outdoors. We, like... We spend most of the summer, um, our visits outside. Because mostly the adults just don't want to deal with us, and we don't want to deal with them. But we would play outside, and Sally would always get these really bad nosebleeds. Uh, like, gushing nosebleeds. And we would always have to run and take her inside. Now, she had this really bad one. Really, really bad that I remember. We were standing in, like, all the parking lot with the driveway. The gravel driveway. She was just walking, and she sneezed. And, like, blood just out in the ground and the rocks were covered in blood and me and jam were like i think your sister's a demon <laughs> um and sally was just there like her entire the front of her shirt stained her neck stained her mouth stained um everything was red and it was like really 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 bad like to the point where she was starting to get dizzy and my dad was like oh my god and we have to run we ran her inside she was fine she's still fine she's She's maybe just a little broken, but, um, she's fine, and, um, I got salty, because it was my dad taking her inside, now, um, the others, like, my grandmother and Jan and Sally's mom, they don't really like, like, yes, they'll go outside, but they won't go on, like, walks and stuff, they like to sit out in the deck, they'll watch us, um, stuff like that, my dad, he loves to take us on hikes and stuff, he takes us on walks. He's like our adult field guide. So make sure you know we don't die. But we are more than capable of doing it on our own. Because, like, I'm 41. <laughs> I'm 41. Um, I'm pretty sure I could do this by myself. I'm not stupid. Um, I have a very trustworthy intuition. I think I might have actually gotten myself out of getting R-worded by an old guy. I think, I think I might have gotten myself out of being R-worded by an old guy, um, because I didn't want to stop somewhere for, like, Halloween candy. I think I might have gotten myself out of that one. Yeah. Now, the thing is, the, one of the really weird things, this doesn't involve my cousins, but, um, whenever we go around for trick-or-treat, and now I've grown out of this, I love dressing up, okay? You give me a costume, as long as it's all, like, outrageous or stupid, I will wear it. Like, I still have my Zelda and my Link cosplays, and I can't really do it anymore because, you know, Ginger. But, but still, I sometimes, I will bust them out of the closet and I'll put them on. Um, I had khakis, had, emphasis on had, khakis that I wore for my Link cosplay because, um, Mona, I said had because they don't fit. You don't get to look at my grippers, but, um, they used to go down to, like, here. Now they go up to, like, here because, you know, long legs. But I can't really wear them anymore anyway. Uh, but I really liked them. And I have, like, a long sleeve white shirt that I still wear sometimes, like, for my Kaz Brecker cosplay that I did a while ago. Um... Yeah, I love that stuff. I love cosplay. I love dressing up. That is why I want to get into cosplay, okay? Here's my idea. So, I'm a ginger. That means I can't cosplay many of my characters because none of my characters are gingers. All except for one. And there's one that I cannot do. And it's the, it's the ginger. Her hair isn't even really this color. It's more of a light orange. It's lighter than this. Uh, and also, her hair is, like, really, really long, but it, she always has it tied up into a high ponytail. I can't stand ponytails. Um, and she's a mech. Yes, this is the mech. Her name is Ventania, and you might have seen me talk about her or mention her. Um, she is, mm, I want to say she's my oldest OC. She is my oldest. And skipping this comic from my cousins to, um, OCs. We're going to talk about that for the rest of the video. I want to say Ventania is my oldest OC, and it sucks that I have no art of her whatsoever. Like, the only character that I have art of right now is Sandriel, his regality. Um, I don't really know if anyone has seen my post about it, but I drew Sandriel a while back, and shut up, you're not dying, I don't care. Um, I don't know if anybody's really seen it, but, because they didn't get a whole lot of attention, and also people just think I traced 
I'm responding to my best friend. Hold on. Um, thank you to, uh, Wumi Ole for letting me draw Lexi. I will get to that in a second, I promise you. But, um, some people thought I traced. Like, I got a DM. I posted it in, like, an art channel on a server. And, um, I'm pretty sure that somebody was like, ew, did you trace? And I was like, no. Yes, I used a reference image, a reference image. But no, I didn't trace it. I just, like, copied the shapes. Um, um, I'm trying to think what else. And also, his line art is horrible. Like, okay, I did his hair on a different layer because I had to sketch it out, and his hair was impossible to draw. Sandriel, I despise you for that. Um, but he has, like, long, kind of curly hair. Uh, it's all, like, curly as in, like, it's all, like, bunched up to one point on his head it's long and it's loosely curly and his hair from that angle was impossible to draw and the reason why i drew him in like um boxers and not a bikini top but like a sports bra is because um i he normally he wears robes like not like bath robes but like his robes are basically just a giant like sheet of sheer fabric you can see through it um, and he just kind of, like, throws it over himself, drapes it over himself, and he, like, ties it around his hips, like, three different times, so that, you know, you don't get to see the gonads. Because he's, he's the head of the bonnet, you're not going to see his gonads. Unless he asks you. <laughs> um, he is a little bit sleazy. But, um, you know, I could not draw the folds in his robes or, like, his, the drapes or whatever. I couldn't draw that. So I just settled for, like, boxers and a sports bra. That's it. Oh, uh, that's all you're getting out of me, Sandriel. Sorry. Um, and also, I had to adjust his color palette so many times. Because his hair is a little too blonde. He's not blonde. He's orange. It's not like this. It's a little lighter than this. It's almost like this color. Um, he's a soul of him. He's an angel of the sun. Also, by the way, he is my tallest character by far. He stands at 15 foot 9 inch. 15 feet and 9 inches. Um, he look, he makes Ventania look small. Um, and now Ventania, she's pretty tall. She stands at about, uh, maybe like 7, 8-ish feet. But I think that's about the same height as Salvatorum Terre, so good luck. But she is my old associate. Um, I created her a long time ago as a self-insert for a, um, a roleplay in the Zeldaverse. I think it's called the Zeldaverse, the Legend of the Old Universe. I created her as a self-insert. Um, and this was about the, um, Zonai versus Sheikah debate. Um, at least the Zonai are useful. Side eye. <laughs> but, um, I created her. Shut. Oh. Oh, she actually texted me. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, I got the reference images. Yay! <laughs> Oh, oh, okay, um, I thought I wasn't able to draw her little, like, computer eye thingy, um, because it had, like, a bunch of lines in it, but actually, it seemed really, really easy, and I want to try something new, um, with Sandriel, the way I drew him, I drew him in black, like, I used his lines, and they were black, but this time, I'm gonna try using, like, um, different colored outlines for it, like, um, blue for her hair, because I think her hair is blue. My best friend is awesome. Love her. She is the best thing to ever happen to me. Love her. But, um, Ventania, she was a self-insert. Like, really, really old self-insert. Um, I created her for the sole purpose. Uh, oh my god. She's so sweet. She makes me smile so much. Oh my god. 
Uh, Boomy, if you watch this far in the video, or if you're using it for, like, background noise, I think you told me you did that a while ago. Um, I love and appreciate you. I can't wait to see you again. <laughs> I'm, she makes me very happy. I'm so, I'm sorry for my, like, squeak outburst there. She makes me very happy. I'm so excited to draw Lexi. Um, I am so excited to draw her. Oh my god. Because, um, even... I think Ventania was a little bit based off Lexi. I think Lexi came before Ventania did. Um, but the reason why I say that she, she's not a copy, okay? Lexi is like, if I remember correctly, because I think she told me a while ago. If I remember correctly, she's either half AI or full AI. I think she might be a little full AI. Um, I may or may not be wrong. Please feel free to correct me uh, in a post if necessary, because um, it's been a while. But... Um, she's like some sort of AI hybrid. And Ventania is kind of the same thing, but different. Ventania is half human, half mech. And also, they look completely different. Um, Lexi has like that blue color scheme. Um, she's like based on the color blue. And, and that is my best friend's favorite color. I memorized it. Um, one of her favorite colors, at least, because I think she has a lot. But um, Ventania is basically um a fire mage who just got robotically enhanced um a long time ago she fought in a war as a child soldier because her father was like a military general for this like high-ranking noble family and her mother was the red-haired princess of that family or actually it was like the sister of the princess or something like I, I don't remember exactly, but, um, I ha I probably have to write it down somewhere. It probably is written down somewhere, I don't know. But, um, she fought in the War of the Child Soldier. And the enemy, I don't even know what the enemy was. Um, it was, like, human. It wasn't, like, Zonai or anything. But, um, I think she was, she was Hyrulean. Um, and Hyrule fought against, I don't know, Another version of Hyrule that was on another side. I don't know. But um, they fought. The enemy brought in missiles. And um, Ventania was a little too late in getting away from one. And whenever it hit the ground, it explodes into shrapnel. Um, like a bunch of different shards of metal flying everywhere. One hit Ventania directly, like, through her chest. And it killed her on the spot. Um, that is a little gruesome. But, hey, I live for it. Um and mm, what else um and as the war went on and she was just another like count like she was just another body added to the field um a couple other things happened and it cost her her right arm and her left leg um and so she was dismembered and after her father the princess and um minoru like minoru from legend of zelda uh, Tears of the Kingdom. Yes, it was a self-insert. Um, they hired, she, they found Mentania, and, um, the princess and her family commissioned Ventania, or not Ventania, uh, Min, Minoru, to make Ventania for robotic enhancements. Now, Minoru came up with a deal for this. Now, she would make the robotic enhancements for Ventania if she could have Ventania to work on as, like, a prototype, and as her, like, prized mech, her prized soldier, and they agreed to this, and, um, Min, being the state of spirit, she took Ventania's soul, and she, like, put, not, she collected it in her sacred stone, so that she could, like, hold on to it, and make sure that she could put it back in Ventania's new body, so, um, she aged up Ventania, and during it, during the aging up process, because she was, like, 15, 16 when this happened. She's now in her 30s, I think. Um, she aged her up, so she was, like, a little bit farther developed. And, um, she had an arm made. And the way her arm is made, it has all the robotic enhancement stuff. If you cut it open, it's metal. If you cut it open, it, um, has, like, all the wires and stuff. You could probably see it. Um, and up here in her shoulder like where her arm meets her shoulder she 
Min, this is gross, but she tore out Ventanio's like shoulder blade. She made a metal version that works with the arm and she shoved it back in there. She did the same with her left metal leg, except it was the leg, not an arm. Um, and she sent Ventania back to her family and she's like, I will, I will take her whenever I feel necessary so that I can work on her. Um, she wanted to build an army of mechs. That's what, that's basically what it is. Um, and Ventania was now her prized general. And now what? What else comes in the story? And, um, Ventania lives with family and her mother dies and I think her father retires. Um, she moves out and she goes to live with Min in, like, Hyrule. And, um, as Ventania is with Min, Min is commissioned again by Ganondorf. Yes, Ganondorf. I'm just really cringy and I'm probably gonna have to update or edit this. And Ganondorf, um, lost his daughter to the Logrolian War. She was missing only her left arm. She was missing her left arm. And she was, like, dying because of an infection. And then it was like, okay. Uh, she gave Ganondorf the same terms of the deal. I will make her a robotic arm, if only for the sole fact that she has to be my second prize general with Ventania. And she helped, Ventania helped work on Distrain. Um, her name is Distrain. Um, it's a bit, bit of a weird name, but I loved the name Ventania and I used it. Um, and I, the name Distrain. I think Distrain was coming from a spelling error because that's where I get a lot of my names. Like, if you hear some completely off the wall, like Astaria, not Astaria, um, completely off the wall, like, um, Erwin. Erwin is not an OC, it's a city in the Winter Court that I named for roleplay purposes. Um, Erwin just comes from a spelling here. If you hear something completely off the wall, like Ventanio or Distrain, those are probably spelling errors that is modified to be a name. So yeah, Ventanio and Distrain are my two oldest, and also they're lesbians and they're dating. But... They are my two oldest. Um, next up is Brutus. She is my youngest, but she's also one of the ones who isn't a, um, what is, I think somebody's walking around on that. I don't know, but it's not, it's not my bedtime yet, so, yeah. But, Brutus, she is my youngest. She is also probably my least developed. I still have to work on her backstory, but hey, that's okay. Um, I'm currently writing a short story about Brutus and how she was, you know, how she, how she came to be Brutus. Um, and this is in medieval times before they had like, um, ultrasound and say, oh, your baby's a girl. Um, it was, been, it was like really dark and, um, Brutus has a sister. Her name is Bess. Bess was a name that I just stole from a really, really old poem called The Highwayman. Um, I learned about it in English, and I just took the name, because, well, why not? But, uh, anyways, um, Bess is about maybe four years, yeah, she was four years older than Brutus. Um, Brutus, I believe, is, I want to say 23, she's in her 20s. Um, I have not given her an official age yet. Actually, I think I did. Is it probably in my notes somewhere? But I'm going to go find this, um, note. I know I have one. Because I was scared to lose any of my OCs. So I just, I wrote them down. So that I, you know, didn't forget them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot. Um, I'll just write, I'll give you a quick run through. That'll be the end of this video. So, all of my OCs are compiled into one, and most of them are self inserts for um, a universe like Ventania and Distrain were self inserts. Um, some are based off of characters, stuff like that. I don't tell you that. So, Ventania Jane Grey, Distrain and Nia Wild, Brutus Jesper Blackwood, 
Ol Olivier, Estaria, Sandriel, uh, Valor Finahan, Honor Finahan, Wendigo, who was like a really, really old character that I made when I was still in a relationship with my ex, Gwyneth Iceborne, Gwendolyn Iceborne, Iron, and Solus Spellcleaver. Ventania and Destrain were in search for the Legend of Zelda. Um, Brutus's Brutus Olivier, Astaria, Sandriel, Brutus Olivier, Astaria, and Sandriel were all um in their own universe. They weren't based off them anyway. They're not self inserts. Valor and Honor are self inserts for Holly Black's Teeth series. Um, that's who their parents were. Like okay, Wrath Robin Rye and Kay Fierge became the High King and Queen of the Seely, which is the Scottish classification for like good fairies and good elves, like the things that do good. They belong to the light, stuff like that. Um, and those are their parents, um, Valor and Honor, Valor and Honor, Valor Honor. Uh, I don't know. But they are forest elves, um, and they're endangered. Mm. Yeah, they are endangered. Anyway, what else do we have? Uh, they were self inserts. Not really self inserts, but they were created as, like, way down the line. Uh, Wendigo was super old, uh, and I made her in response to a Mary Sue OC that um, my ex had made. Yeah, his name was Grim. He's the lion who carried around a flaming axe. Uh, there's not, not really much else. Uh, Wendigo was his supposed wife slash girlfriend. Um, and she's both a Wendigo, like a half deer, half man hybrid. Um, and she's also like a spooky, uh, I think I made her as like a spooky Halloween OC. She's like a spooky, you know, character for, and she haunts the place where she died. She doesn't really have a backstory. Um, and the way she is, is she wears it, and she has two forms, her Wendigo form and her human form. Um, she's not really a human, but I had to fix the thing. She's not really a human, but, you know, she's still there. And, um, uh, what else? Oh, that's right. She has a little brother, and his name is Moon, spelled with a U. Um, M-U-N-E is her little brother, Moon. Um, and... I did never exactly gave her parents much thought, but her parents basically took Moon as their, like, golden child, and in response to, like, Wendigo being mad about that, they threw acid on her. Acid. And it, like, destroyed the left half of her face. Or right half. In this case, it's right half. Um, it destroyed the right half of her face. And she was kicked out of her house. She now lives in, like, the wilderness. She didn't die. But she kind of, like, lives in the wilderness, you know, Loyal to few, um, known to none, stuff like that. Moon still loves her. Moon Moon loves his sister. Um, and she found out she was a Wendigo, and she picked up a deer skull, an enchanted deer skull, and she put it on to cover her face, her, and the ass, what the acid did to her, and it's like she's bound to that thing. She can take it off, but it will always come back to her. She also never takes it off anyway. But, yeah, I think I drew her a while ago, but it was, like, horrendously bad. Um, and I don't ever talk about that. Um, Gwyneth and Gwendolyn are self inserts for Akatar, specifically the Winter Court. Um, they're the twin wraith daughters of Callias and Vivian. Um, they are, it's, they're Iceborne race, and they're depend. it's dependent on the universe that they're in, what um their age is mostly they're like my age they're 12 to 14. um iron was a self-insert not really a self-insert um he was a character that didn't really have a name so um and i wanted to use him for role play so i slapped a name on him and i just gave him the backstory whatever whatever i thought was good he doesn't actually have a backstory he was literally just a facade um but he was another character from the ashes and the wings of night or no, it's not the ash. It's the serpent. Serpent. It's the serpent in the wings of night. It was like 
by Carissa Broadhead. Um, I read that series and I was like, hey, I want to use this guy for roleplay, but he doesn't he doesn't ever get named in the series. So I was like, you know what? I'll just slap a name on him. So I took a name from AFK Arena, slapped it on um, a vampire, and was like, hey, uh, the Shadow Morn King. Have fun. Uh, and Solus Spellcleaver. He is the son of, you guessed it, Helion Spellcleaver, High Lord of the Day Court. Um, he's also about the same age as Gwyneth and Gwendolyn, but, um, all the High Lords were putting pressure on Helion for not having an heir, and he was like, oh, wait, you know what, whatever, fine, I'll pop out an heir, just to shut him up. And he had Solus with, um, a high-ranking noble lady of the Day Court, and Solus looks like his father, but he does not have black hair, he has blonde hair, um, and he gets that from his mother. Um, his mother remains, remains unnamed, but if it comes out of it, I'll call her Daya. I'm not gonna call her Daya. Um, he was named Solus, like, as in you can take Solus, because, um, Sol means son, and Solus means, like, comfort. So, Julia, really I'm thinking, you know what? Comfort of the sun. Solus, you are my son now. Um, and Solus, uh, he is the son of Helion, minus Lucian. We don't talk about Lucian. Yes, we do talk about him. I love him. But at the same time, he should stick to the autumn court. Because I don't know. I don't really think he's a fit for the day court. Uh, just stay in the autumn court, my dude. Stay somewhere else. You are not welcome here. Back. But, um, yeah. And the reason why I put Solus on that list, and he was a self insert, but, um, Resand went around doing something stupid for, okay, Reese Hand and Helion have this tradition of whenever there is a solar, I think, I don't know if it's a solar or lunar eclipse, whenever there's a, an eclipse, um, uh, I don't know what one it was, but, um, whenever there's, like, an eclipse, whatever, like, if it's a solar eclipse, uh, or lunar eclipse, Helion will get in Reza's way, or Reza will get in Helion's way so much as they can for that singular day. Uh, so on and so forth. And they'll, like, bother each other as much as they can. But, um, Reza was coming over to the day court to do that, and, um, Solus was in the kitchen. He was standing on the table. He was standing on Helion's kitchen island, trying to get the pop pop tarts out of the top cabinet because he couldn't reach it because he's a little short. Um, and he had leftover soup in his hand. And Risen came in without knocking or anything. He just kind of walked in. Um, Solus freaked out. And th he doesn't know Risen. He threw the can of the Tupperware of soup at Risen. Knocked him out. And was like panicking. Was like, what do I do with him? Um, and he just sat there for like 10 minutes. Just like, what do I do with him? What do I do with him? And he, he wasn't waking up. He was still alive, but he wasn't waking up. So Solus was like, I have an idea. So Solus grabs a broom from the broom closet, shoves Risen down the stairs with the handle uh, into the basement, slams the basement door shut, locks it, and puts the broom back, walks away. Has a soup, and uh, does nothing. That's literally what he does. And Feyre comes looking for him. He's like, where is my husband? He... he so, if you're wondering where Helion is during all of this, he got, like, really hungover, and he was just sleeping. He was sleeping. That's what he does. Um, Solus was just sitting on the couch, and, um, Feyre comes over, and she's like, Solus, have you seen Rizan? He's like, uh, raven hair, violet eyes. Yeah, have you seen him? Uh, yeah, he walked in on an house, like, knocked him out with soup. What? I knocked out the High Lord of the Night Court with soup. Because he walked into my house unannounced. I have the security footage. Okay. And uh, she started laughing. But I don't feel like imitating her. I was like, okay. Well, show me the security footage. So S Solus scampers up into Helion's office where he's not allowed. He's not allowed in the office. Um, he's like, well, I gotta do this quick before Helion wakes up so we don't get in trouble. But he pulls up the security footage. And he's like, here. Um, I sent it to you. And he was like, okay. So, yeah, Solus um, 
got that backstory because he knocked out Rezan with soup. And I'm going to try to end this video right before it gets to be an hour long. So, ha <laughs> ha. Uh, bye. Back, back, back. Go, get. I don't know why I barked at you, but get.